All right, let me go to Greg Cassidy, uh, who's building the Mohawk Models fire station. And this, I understand, Greg, uh, finishes up your build of this fire station. Yes, it does. This will be our last week. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Jim. Um, let me bring it all the way up. Okay, this is our last week, week five, of building the Alton Fire Station from MoTrack Models. Um, and if you followed along, I'm building the S scale version, but it's available in O, S, H, O, and N, with only minor variations between them all. Uh, tonight, we'll be finishing up uh, the porch roof. We'll be mounting the front doors in the gingerbread trim, uh, putting mortar on the chimney, mounting the base, and building some ladders, and then doing some weathering. So the first thing I did was I built what I called the porch roof. It's actually a canopy that goes over the side door. The parts used are what you see here. There's a front trim. He actually gave us two of them in the S-scale kit. And this is the roof portion. Um, I punched those out. And there's also a piece of paper in there that's the rolled roofing. First thing I did was I glued the two pieces of the canopy roof together. And I just used canopy glue, not because it was a canopy, but it works fine. And I just used an angle iron that I use for weights and for uh, holding stuff together. And it gave me a perfect 90 degree angle. Then I painted the underside of the canopy roof gray. And I also painted the top of the rolled roofing with a light spray of gray with my airbrush. And this is how I usually do rolled roofing. What I'll do after I put a light coat of the gray on it, I sand the edge of it on a block of wood that I have. And that gives me a worn edge. And you'll see it once I put it together. Now, after painting the canopy roof, it has red trim all the way around the edge. So I painted the red on it. And then I took my sanding stick and just did a little bit of distressing on it so it looked like the paint had been worn just a little bit. Now, when I went to put the piece of trim in, I found that having glued that together before I put it in meant I had to trim these corners. I suppose you could glue this together with the piece of trim in place. I just didn't think that far ahead. But trimming the corners worked. And I just used a piece of canopy, uh, some canopy glue to glue the piece of trim in. And once that was all dry, I went ahead and put the stain on it, just like I've stained most of the other parts of this kit using a hunter line grease. Then I glued the canopy onto the side of the building and I cut the pieces of rolled roofing and used canopy glue to glue them on overlapping the worn edges. The next part of the kit is to glue the front doors in place. And you could go ahead and just glue the doors inside the edge here. And that would probably hold if you're going to put it on a layout. Mine's going to be a display model, and it's going to be handled a fair bit. So I wanted to put some type of glue block behind them. All I did was I trimmed out a couple pieces of wood from the fret that the doors came on. And then I measured how much I'd need to put behind the door without interfering with the windows. And I marked that. And then I put glue on the edge that was going to be attached to the wall. I then glued the two to the wall and used a clamp to hold them in place. And I also put a little glue block up here at the top where the two doors are going to meet. And once that was all done, it was just a matter of putting glue behind the edge of the doors and gluing them to the blocks in place. Now, the next piece we're going to put on is the gingerbread. And that comes as a separate laser cut piece. And I first primed it with some gray primer and then went ahead and painted it with the same red that we've used on everything else. I then did a little bit of light 
distressing on it, the same as I've done with most of the other pieces of painted wood. I just used my wire brush and just barely touched it with the sanding stick. Now you can just glue the piece of gingerbread right here in the V of the roof. But again, I wanted this to be extra strong. So what I did, I cut two small pieces of 1 8 inch strip wood and I glued them to the gable end of the wall. And then I just glued the gingerbread to those pieces of strip wood. And that way it's got a lot of surface area that it's attached to. And it also made sure that the relief was even on both sides. And then once it was glued in place, I went ahead and put my grease stain on it as well. And this is how it comes out looking. Once you put it on, you can barely see the pieces of strip wood that are behind it. Now, with the S scale kit, it comes with a wooden laser cut chimney. The O scale kit also comes like that. I know that the HO kit has a plastic tissue chimney, and I'm unsure about the N scale kit. But what I do for the wooden chimney is I first mark the center, and then I'll drill a hole in it. And I use that so that I can put a wire in it, and I can use that wire while I'm painting it. I do similar things with the plastic chimney, or if they have a hollow middle, I have a piece of strip wood that I use. Anyway, once I painted it red, I got ready to put the mortar in. Now, I actually have two chimneys because I promised you guys at the beginning of this that I was going to show you two different methods of applying mortar to a, chim uh, to a brick chimney. This could actually work on any brick, and I've used it on a number of buildings. One method is going to use lightweight spackling, and the other method is going to use a, dist a distress crayon. And they're actually somewhat similar in how they work. For the spackling, I just use a brush and a little bit of water and a flat tool I have for applying it. I'll first take some of the spackling and apply it on the chimney. And then I'll take the brush with the water on it and just move the spackling around until it's into all of the grooves. And once it's in all the grooves, I'll just let it dry there. Now with the distress crayon, the procedure is somewhat similar. What a distress crayon is, is water activated pigment that's in a binder. That's kind of like a waxy crayon. The big advantage I see with using a distress crayon is they come in a multitude of colors. So you don't have to settle on white. You can put in a gray or a sand color or whatever you like. The first thing I do is I use the distress crayon and just smear it on all sides of the brick. And then I use water and you could use a brush. This time I use my finger and you smear it around, basically pushing it into all of the mortar cracks. And then once you've done that, I take a cloth and wipe the excess off the top. And then I put it aside to dry. And when they're both dry, there isn't much of a difference between the two. Uh, they both work well. With the distress crayon, you can get small voids, which gives you a look of older mortar. And as I say, you have a choice of colors if you want to do that. Um, once I'm done with either of these, I don't put any type of clear over it. But when I've used this on buildings, sometimes I have put a dull coat over it just to help protect it. Now, for my laser cut chimney, it has a cap that goes on it. Uh, this step you won't need to use with the plastic chimney. The first thing I did after punching it out was I painted it a concrete color. In this case, I used Israeli sand. And I painted the top of the chimney black and then put the cap on place. If you wanted to, you could probably drill and hollow that out, but that's a bit of work. Now, if you've ever tried to glue a chimney or something else into a roof where it was supposed to stand up straight, you know sometimes even if you camper the edges of the hole that you have in there, it's hard to keep it from trying to stick out at a, at a 90 degree angle. 
So what I've done here, in addition to camfering the holes, I mounted the building upside down on some blocks, made sure I had it dead square. And then I used a block to hold the roof and my other block to push on the chimney. I had put glue on the opening and stuck it in to where I wanted it to go. And while this is holding it in place at a, at a perfect plumb angle, I cut two little blocks of wood and went inside and glued those in place. And again, as I said, since this building is going to be handled, I wanted that chimney to be extra strong. So I let all of that dry. And then once I'm done, whenever I've put something through a roof like this, I like to use gallery glass to put simulated tar around the chimney. And I just use a toothpick to apply it and then let it dry in place. Now, as I showed you before with the base, you're not going to see very much of it unless you have the doors open or you're doing an interior. In my case, I did want to have a little bit of weathering where the doors are, indicating maybe vehicles had gone in and out. And that's easier to do before I glue the base onto the building. So I did that using some pigments. And now it's time to glue the building onto the base. Um, I made sure all of the tabs fit right, which they did. And I just put glue all the way around on all four edges of the building and then stuck it onto the base. And if any glue squeezes out anywhere, I just use one of these little micro brushes to clean it up. Now, one of the little extras that came with this kit was a set of ladders. And I did a little bit of research and it looks like fire department ladders around the world come in many different colors. So you could paint yours red or yellow, silver. A lot of them were just left the brown wood that they come in. I decided to paint mine red and my extension ladder silver. So for the extension ladder, what I did was glued the two pieces together and then took some thread and used some of the liquid PSA to glue it to the upright part, bring it around and then glue, glue it back down to the bottom so it looks like it's tied there. There's lots of different extension ladders. And this one came out looking like a passable one. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a little bit of weathering on the ladders. Uh, this one, I think I did a little too much. My wife says it looks like a painter's ladder. So now that the building's all done, uh, it's time to weather it. Um, many of you probably have your own favorite ways of weathering. I like to use pigments. Uh, this is a number of pigments you can buy. Uh, they come in hobby shops and art supply shops. And I have soft brushes that I use with them. I'll make little piles of whatever pigment colors I'm gonna be using. And then depending on what brush I'm using is what I'm gonna be doing with it. I use a small narrow brush to put little streaks in places. And then I'll use a big soft brush to help blend them in. And I'll also put pigments around the bottom to show where it might've collected water or become dirty. I also use pigments for places where it might be running down on the roof, from the chimney, from other openings, and around all the wear areas, such as doors, uh, on the side door, and things like that. So at this point, I'm done with mine, and I'm quite happy with the way it came out. The diamond shingles really make it stand out, and I think it's a nice little firehouse. And Jeff Adams should be with us. I'm here. All right, great. Well, that's it for my build of the Motrac Fire, Alton Fire Station. I want to thank you for joining us. And if you followed along, um, I hope you enjoy yours. And I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. He has a word to say. Before you, before you do that, Greg. Yes. Um, the stuff you made the tar on it was called Gallopy, Gallery. Gallery Glass. Uh, and it's called their uh, lead. I think. Where do you get it? Uh, I got it at Michael's. Oh, okay, cool. But uh, I think you can find it online too. Well, I got Michael's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. I wish I had Mike. <clears throat> I wish I had Michael's near mine. My nearest one is over an hour away. <laughs> well, you live out in the boonies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>